In this tutorial, we'll cover reference planes. You may think of a reference plane as the visible grid you see in the modeling window. In actuality, a reference plane defines an infinite plane in 3D space that is used as your workspace for creating and moving objects in 3D. The visibility of the grid can be turned on or off by clicking on the Show Grid icon. And the visibility of the axis can be turned on and off by clicking on the Show Axis icon. Note that even when the grid and its axis are not visible, the reference plane still exists. There is always one active reference plane. All graphic interaction is interpreted relative to the active plane. For example, draw a rectangle and the cursor automatically tracks on the active plane, and the extrusion direction is perpendicular to the active plane. When drawing objects, if the cursor crosses over the face of an existing object, a new temporary reference plane is displayed. This lets you draw on the face of any object. To lock a specific reference plane, right-click and choose Lock Reference Plane. As you move the cursor, you'll see that the reference plane remains locked regardless of the cursor position. Create another object and the object is created on this locked plane. Observe that the lock icon in the Reference Planes Tools palette is active to designate that the active plane is now locked. To unlock the plane, simply right-click and deselect the Lock Reference Plane option, or you can deselect the lock icon in the Reference Plane Tools palette. And now, as you move the cursor over other faces, temporary planes are now displayed. Let's examine the other tools available in the Reference Plane Tools palette that are used to create, orientate, and resize a reference plane. The reference plane may be one of the three Cartesian planes by clicking on the XY, YZ, or the ZX icon. Let's set it back to the XY plane. You can also create your own custom plane. Let's start with an object such as a box. We'll extrude a rectangle, and then using the Move tool, we'll hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and select just a segment. I'll then press and release the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows to move in the perpendicular direction. And now we have a slanted face to our box. Select the Define Reference Plane tool, and then click on any face of the object, and a custom reference plane is created. Observe that the Custom Plane icon is also active, signifying that the default plane is a custom plane, not the XY, YZ, or ZX plane. If you move the cursor around, you'll see that you can still draw on other faces on your object. And if you move the cursor away from your object, the custom plane you just created is the active plane. Look in the Custom Reference Planes palette and observe that the Define Reference Plane tool automatically saves the newly defined plane. If you need to adjust the size, position, or orientation of the reference plane, whether it's a temporary plane or a custom plane, click on the Edit Reference Plane tool, and the control widget is displayed. Click and drag the yellow arrow to resize the grid. You can change the extents in any direction. Observe that numeric information is displayed in the balloon. You can use grid snapping to help refine your size if necessary. For example, I'll set the grid snap to be one foot and turn it on. And when I resize my reference plane, the size snaps to an even increment of one foot. Click and drag the red, green, and blue axis lines to move the plane along the X, Y, or Z axis. Click and drag the red, green, or blue rings to rotate the plane around any axis. And then click and drag the center yellow bullet to position the origin of your custom plane. Currently, we are editing the existing plane 1. If we want to save a new custom plane, right-click, choose New Plane, then type in the desired name, such as My Custom Plane. Hit the Return key, and a new custom plane is added to the list. You can also click on the plus button to add a new custom plane to your palette. Click in the first column next to any custom plane to make it the active plane. It should be noted that only one plane can be active at any given time. To edit the parameters, right-click and choose Edit, and the Reference Plane Parameters dialog is invoked where we can type in numeric information for the position, rotation, and extents of the reference plane. In addition, we can load any image as an underlay. The Translucent option is great for importing images as an underlay for tracing. It should be noted that a separate image can be loaded for each custom plane. To look directly at the currently active plane, click on the Look at Reference Plane icon and the view automatically adjusts. We'll conclude this tutorial with a couple ways to customize the visible grid. The spacing of the grid lines is set in the following fields. The module is the spacing between the major grid lines. The number of divisions determines the number of minor grid lines between the major grid lines. For example, if we have 10 foot for the grid lines, 
and divided by five lines, it gives us a two foot grid. The unit of measure for the grid is determined by your project's working unit settings in the project settings dialog, which is invoked from the file pull down menu. Also in the project settings dialog is the ability to change the color of the axis lines and the grid lines. This is under the appearance tab. And this concludes the Bonsai 3D reference planes tutorial.